Hearthstone Game Breaker Tournament that we're holding here each and every week, a bi-weekly tournament um, that happens on Mondays. So if you guys are interested in participating, be sure to catch our next tournament with all the details on GameBreaker.tv. But for now, we have the second match in our semi-finals coming up with Eldorian on his Warlock and Nico Story on his Mage. But before we get into that match, I want to introduce to you guys who are going to be helping me shoutcast this upcoming match. Joining us as well, as well as he does all the time, Mr. Jeremy Quick, also known as Squishy, here on Gamer. How's it going, Squish? Pretty good. Pretty good, man. Uh, we just witnessed a pretty, pretty good semi, uh, first semifinal, and now can't wait to see the second one here. It will be exciting, although I did not get the roller coaster I was asking for. If you missed it, you'll have to go back and watch that video. Uh, also joining us this this week is the one and only <laughs> Kyle Lanfear. Lanfear. Um, Plus, also known as Yes, I, we're gonna we're gonna have a roller coaster. It's happening. I want, and we need it's that happening this one. This is gonna be the roller coaster. I hope so. I Mage vs. Warlock, Battle of the Casters, no less. It's gonna be an exciting one. We've seen uh, we saw a really kind of as we talked about a really interesting match. Um, IBS. Just going on the offensive in match one with his shaman, really kind of got uh, a little bit too far behind and allowed blue between blues's traps and his hero power. He was able to take game one. Ives took that and you know made adjustments for game two. It helped that blues didn't really draw a lot uh, of secret cards, and and Ives was able to turn around and take game two during game three. Blues just drew no secret cards, leaving a, a fast and open opportunity for Ives to take the lead. And now he's looking to this match to see who his opponent is going to be. Um, let's talk about this match here, Eldorian and Nico Story. Where where did they stand um, in the Swiss rounds? Where obviously they they fought their way to be here in the quarterfinals the last week. How did they do in their qualifiers? Uh, both members uh, finished the Swiss at three one. Um, I believe the only loss Eldorian had was to a Shaman, and the only loss that Nico Story had was also to a Shaman. So I'm not so sure that that votes well for the finals. Uh -oh. Um, however, uh, they, they both kind of have that that aggressive style. Looking at these decks, uh, typically mages are a little more control. Uh, this mage, uh in particular, seems to want to get out to a very good start, control the mid-game, and finish with some burn uh, to the face, as opposed to just saying, you do it, whatever you're doing, it's not going to happen, I'm just going to keep you from attacking me, and then I'll burn you in the face. This is a little bit of a different take on the mage class. Uh, also, buff mages. <laughs> just had to get that one in there. What do you think here about this Warlock deck, Squishy, where uh, what Eldorian's been doing with it? Uh, it's, it's the kind of general Warlock, or it's a spin-off of the general Warlock aggro deck we've been seeing, uh, recently in the major tournaments. Uh, it takes standard low-cost minions that the Warlock is famous for, such as Voidwalker and Flame Imp, and then using buff creatures such as Shattered Sun Cleric, uh, Dark Aura and Dwarf to trade favorably, since the opponent cannot block or decide what to block with. Yes, uh, this particular Warlock Eldorian also has... Uh, played in some um, fairly major tournaments and has actually won uh, a tournament with this Warlock deck. Uh, if that helps show you, his, he actually has some experience, so maybe he can draw on that experience to help him get to the finals of this tournament. I've got to say, I'm excited to see uh, what Eldorian can bring with his Warlock deck, but I just, it, I, I wonder why he's not playing with that overpowered deck. I mean, if it's overpowered, why aren't you, why aren't you entering a tournament with an overpowered priest? That's all I've got to wonder. <laughs> the over, but he's got the Game Breaker deck. That's why. Yeah, it's that true. Is the Game it's Breaker true. deck. It'll be exciting. So what do you guys think here um, in terms of hero power? You know, we, we see with the Warlock taking attrition to himself in order to fish for cards to be able to put what he needs on the field and, and get, you know, he, that's the best part of the Warlock deck is you're able to play fast 
and then as long as you have the health to spare, you can quit. You can kind of regenerate your your card income. And uh, it actually looks like the players are actually going to be getting starting here. So let's go ahead and just uh, jump right into the matches here. <laughs> I think I think I, I tricked them uh, out. They thought we, they thought we were about to go, and uh, they just decided it was time to start. They want to get started, so wait. let's get started. They were so excited. I know. I couldn't wait. Uh, yeah, as you as you come in here, look at that's exactly why this warlock deck is so fast. Uh, the combined with the hero power, uh, they don't care about their health so much, really. Uh, they're really just they want to throw as many minions out there as possible, beat you in the face with them, and keep drawing so that mid game they're throwing two minions down every turn or three, and they're able to keep their draw with with their with their health uh, their health pool as a resource. Uh, is... And it, it is it's one of the fastest decks in Hearthstone as we know it right now. This is one of the best starts for uh, a Warlock aggro deck as you can pretty much get um, other than maybe like a double flame imp, but the coin is just so good for aggro decks that uh, I think that's definitely a big plus. That Arcane Missiles, mm -hmm. they're splitting one between each one of the uh, minions on the board there, bringing that... Uh... Flame Imp down to one health. They'll be able to finish that off with the hero power, but uh, going to have to sit here and, and deal with the fact that Eldorian's going to be able to take care of that uh, mirror images fairly easily here. Yeah, I think um, where he's at right now, is, as far as the mage is concerned, Nico, uh, that is a key card for him. He, he really needs to have those mirror images out there. And just play as much defense as he can to get to that mid game where where his deck can slowly start to take over, just playing more impressive cards than the warlock is able to show. Now the problem uh, so is, this is the very important part of this game. Nico's story is got two strong cards in his hand. He's got his fireball. He's got his flame strike. If he tries to wait too long into the late game, you know that's when a mage becomes super powerful when they have the mana to spare and still get cards on the board. Yes, uh, that that's kind of where he's, he's he's trying to just as much as he can keep control. As you see, the the uh, I believe that's the uh, the blood imp, the one that gives uh, everyone else an extra extra piece of health. Uh, another very important card in that deck. Uh, it allows his cards to just stay just out of removal range to a lot of classes. Uh, Mage being one of the few that can kind of deal with them uh, with. Uh, an arcane missile or, or something that doesn't necessarily target that blood imp but can deal damage either through AoE or random effects. Right. I think for this deck, Flame Strike is going to occur too late. And that's why most mages don't play Flame Strike at all. It's just for the, by the time you can use it, the game's usually already decided. He's he I almost don't... opted to go for the face there. I actually don't know if I think that, that that's too bad. Uh, it, what it does is it allows you to put pressure on the Warlock saying, you know, you can't keep drawing these cards or you're going to kill yourself. But uh, the other thing you have to worry about is this board just getting too out of control. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a balance for sure. I think the board getting out the of control fairy is... Dragon. The Fairy Dragon plus Blood M combo for a mage is one of the hardest things to remove from the game. Three health, three, uh, three health, you can't target it with your hero power or any of your removal spells. It's so hard to get rid of. However, in this ways, is definitely one of the important parts of this game. This is, and this is, again, where we were kind of talking, the, the Warlock, um, Nico, or El Eldorian, has just been able to play so fast with so many minions on the board here, but is not suffering like Nico Store is. Nico Store only sitting here with four cards in his hand, two spell, three spells, and uh, one high mana cost minion. Whereas, you know, we see so many minions right now on the board for Eldorian, and still three cards in his hand at the moment, and able to continue to fish until his life starts to get into uh, the danger zone here. Blizzard, though, coming yes, out there, that's going to be able to hold all of the enemies there in place. That is a very, very good top deck right there. That is everything he kind of needed. Um, that kind of buys him a turn and, and gets rid of some of these creatures and allows that Blood Imp to not be there anymore, which is, ends up being very important. Uh, he's just going to keep going for the face, though. I mean, there's rarely a time when you're playing this Warlock deck that going for the face is not the correct choice. <laughs> Except probably unexpected... 
I don't he think does. he expects this flame strike. He does have seven mana to get that flame strike off, and there it goes. That's going to be able to clear is... the board fairly strong, and he's still got that fireball laid, laying in wait to uh, to sit there and throw right at the warlock if you can get some extra spell power maybe in there to, to beef up the damage here. It looks like uh, Nico, yeah, or actually think... Eldorian's going to respond by throwing all of his cards on the field. <laughs> Saying you've got nothing on your board clear has nothing on my low mana cost minions. Yes, uh, that seven mana flame strike probably not expected, but dealt with really well. Considering just because he has all those like one one mana, one mana, two mana, and I it was a three for the the arcane golem or four. Uh, just right, really hard to keep removing all those cards, and he's already down to seven health. And this puts uh, he has obviously to kill the Nico knife juggler here. This puts Nico's story in a very tough situation simply because he only has so much mana to put onto the field. He could have laid down that Cobalt, but instead he chose to just ping off the Divine Shield. And uh, this might turn it around here. There's only going to be about one more turn. Oh, nope. Looks like that's going to be the end there for Nico's story. And GG. Is it? That is it. That actually lasted a little longer than, than you would think uh, a Warlock deck would take. But uh, yeah, still the same outcome. Very fast. I mean, as you said, you guys talked about how fast the Warlock deck strikes. Um, you know, you stack it with enough low mana. And that's what we saw there. The, the, uh, the idea that Eldorian was able to tap in and continue to draw to keep card advantage on Nico's story was huge. Because it not only allowed him to overwhelm him on the board, but it also allowed him to overwhelm him on the back end when Nico's story was like, hey, look, I got a, I got a flame strike. I'm going to clear your whole board. Eldorian was like, oh, okay, well, here's four more monsters that you got to <laughs> deal with that I had in wait in case yeah. that happened. Yeah, as you see there, just like you, you just said, the, 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 the Warlock is just way too fast. It's it's actually a very similar deck list to the one that I used to uh, get me to a, a decent ranking in Hearthstone and Constructed, and it didn't lose a lot. There are very few decks that could that could kind of stand up to that sort of pressure, and and it's also not exactly an expensive deck to throw together, so people looking to do well, this is the kind of deck list you kind of want to be looking at. It's it's cheap. Aggro's uh, fairly, fairly simplistic, like I said. There's very rare time. Like, you just go for the face. There's very few times where trading is the actual answer. Uh, it's and it is the fastest deck right now, so it's it's just where he wants to be, just just right at the face, and, and hope that they can't deal with with all those cards. Yeah, uh, Eldorian definitely had a semi decent top deck uh, in that very last thing. There, I mean, he also had a life tap, and he had the knife juggler as well to deal extra damage. He he definitely had lethal there, no matter what happened. But definitely a really good game, and hopefully we can see some kind of uh, comeback because these. This game is definitely going to get interesting if it gets real to quick. Game. Real quick, before we just go to a commercial break and get the second match started, I want to bring up what is Nico Story's strategy going to be going into this? He knows, obviously, he's got to worry about how fast this deck can play. Is there anything he can do except hope for good draw on board clear? Uh, I don't think so. I think he's going to rely on minions like those uh the zero two taunt minions to come out early um his arcane missiles need to hit the right people uh and he needs to have that blizzard ready he, i mean he basically did what he had to do in that first game and it wasn't enough so he he's gonna need some help he's gonna need uh the warlock deck i think to kind of just not draw into what he needs uh he has cold and cold <laughs> in his deck if he gets those, that's an early aggress, uh, a stop to the aggressor. Because it's three mana, it means it comes out two turns earlier than a blizzard, and generally you're not going to have more than three minions on the board at that time anyways. So it's basically a pseudo uh, Frost Nova, since he doesn't have those. And that'll definitely stop the aggression, buy him time again, but he needs, he needs to, I think, either A, get the right cards, because he needs to survive this storm. And then... He needs to finish him off when he's not that low on health already, because uh, Eldorian was out of cards, but he was at nine health, so that's not a very good position to be in. It will yep, be yeah, the uh, the Kona cults. 
very good. They uh, they also allow you to deal with those those blood imps, which are so pesky for for a lot of classes to deal with. It will definitely be an interesting match to see. So if you guys want to see match two, be sure to stay tuned right here. We're going to get to match two in just a second. But real quick, we need to throw to a commercial break and thank our sponsors who helped make this tournament possible. Are you looking for a great book to read, but just too on the go to sit down and read one? Then you should check out audible.com. With hundreds of audiobooks available right now for download, have your favorite stories presented to you instead of reading a 300-page novel. With a plethora of video game-related topics to choose from, there's just about something for everyone, like the new Dawn of the Aspects book for World of Warcraft. If you head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial, and you'll even receive a free audiobook to get started right now. We're super happy to have Audible.com sponsoring these Hearthstone tournaments, and by supporting them, you help ensure that we're able to do more. So if you're looking for great audiobooks to listen to on the go, head on over to Audible.com slash GameBreaker and start listening today. Hello everybody and welcome back again to the GameBreaker Hearthstone League, the league where you guys participate each and every week. It's a bi-weekly tournament held right here on Game Breaker. So if you guys have not attempted to participate, you should do so by keeping an eye out on GameBreaker.tv. Joining us to help Shaq shoutcast these matches as they go by each and every week, Mr. Jeremy Quick, also known as Squishy, as well as Kyle Lansky, also known as Sophie. There it is. You got it. That's yeah. It. Yep. <laughs> come, come play in these tournaments these things are super fun i mean they, they actually uh, during the swiss watching everyone kind of hang out and just talk crap and mumble and 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 kind of interact with everyone have fun and play through this whole thing was was as fun to listen to at the, to say at the very least so we've seen we've obviously we're getting into here match number two it's going to be a um Warlock Mage rematch here. Eldorian taking the lead with his Speed Warlock deck for those of you guys who are just catching up with us now. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy tournament here that we're going. Where do you guys think, we, we, we saw it, like I said, how fast the Warlock deck can take people down. What do you think Nico is going to do to make adjustments here for game number two? Kind of I, I like, like like Squishy had said, he's gonna need those Kona Colds, he's gonna need those Blizzards, and he's gonna need that Flame Strike. Those are that's really what he needs. Uh, he needs the right draw. If he gets that right draw, he's gonna win that late game. There's not much else a Warlock can do. Um, but he just he just needs to get there. Survive, 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 survive. Don't die. Don't die in the first five six turns, and don't be too low after that. He needs to believe in the heart of the cards, Sophist. <laughs> that's what he needs to do. <laughs> that's it. Yep. You just gotta, you gotta believe. Uh, other than that, and, and fight, fight for what you fight for another person that you believe in, <laughs> not just fight for your selfish reasons. Exactly. <laughs> he needs to get a good uh, flame strike as well. I'm, I mean, the surprise is over. During the break, um, Eldorian actually said that he he was in fact surprised by that flame strike, but now he expects it. Meaning he may not overextend and get a six, six person flame strike. What was it five? It was one of the two. But now that he's going to expect it, he may be more prepared for it and won't ex overextend so hard. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and yeah. jump right into this match and get this match started because uh, let's just get to it. So here we go. Match number two, starting with uh, Eldorian versus Nico Story, round two. Let's jump right in. Oh, it's a trap. And he's got a Hunter Seeker deck too. It's this? a trap. <laughs> it's a tarp. I need I need to get one of those. <laughs> Here we go. Gul'dan pulling out a fairy dragon, Voidwalker, and a Venture Co Mercenary, which he's gonna drop, as well as his Dark Iron Dwarf. Eldorian gets the coin again, which is kind of unfortunate, considering Agro worked so well with it. Yep. Uh, the good news for Nico is that that coin isn't, unless he draws a good card, uh, probably not going to amount to much other than just a turn three play or a turn four play. At least he has a, a one drop this time. The Mana Worm definitely gonna be able to stop 
some aggression rather than the mirror images. It depends if he has a response to this fairy dragon, because he cannot ping it with his hero power. So he's going to turn around and just go straight into cooldown. Get it, try and get that early pressure so that Gul'dan sits low enough at a, at a, and can't necessarily tap into his hero power as much as he might have been last turn. Uh, looking at both these hands, he, Nico has them, some draw cards in his hand against a deck like the Warlock deck, though. That is three mana that you're not using to survive, so not sure he's sitting in a very good spot right now. There, as you see, um, Eldorian purposely probably not filling up his board too much uh, for fear of that flame strike if he gets to turn seven, and knowing that he doesn't have the most aggressive start. Those mana worms going down, however, just not pulling off the low cost mana to buff that monster's attack power very much. Right. Unknown to uh, Nico here, he does have Demon Fire, which means that he expects to be able to ping it next turn to kill it, but if he Demon Fires that Void Walker, it's going to gain plus two, plus two, making him able to kill that mana worm, but instead just flat out kills it with the two damage. Not a bad choice. Throwing down another Void Walker just to keep some taunt on the field. You'll notice what he did there. He placed the Void Walkers on the opposite sides of the Fairy Dragon, which means that both of those cannot be Cone of Colded because the Fairy Dragon can't be centered, or the Cone of Cold can't be centered on the Fairy Dragon. It's a very good play. A, yeah, some of the, the little things. Ooh. Not if that Arcane Mirage. <laughs> He's thinking about the smack talk. To... We got oh, some, we smack might have some smack going, talk though. going out right here. <laughs> <laughs> they said, "They said, Blizzard, forget your easy chat system with six emotes. I'm just gonna message the person directly." <laughs> oh man, so good. Uh, hanging in there. This is turn. We're going on turn five, and the board hasn't been completely dominated by the warlock. So. Uh, not the worst position for Nico to be in. That hurts. Loses the Venture Combler Snurry. I don't mind losing that personally. It's... It's definitely one of the best things to lose in that hand, to be honest. Yeah. Here's that Kona Cold that we, we were talking about Cold. now being drawn. Are we going to see it used, or will it be saved? And actually, he's going to drop an Azure Drake. Yeah, you don't want to use that unless you're in a position where you're kind of fighting for your life. And at this point, he's actually not. Uh, he's actually even fairly close, despite not doing any damage himself uh, to the Warlock. The Warlock has actually hurt himself enough that they're fairly even on life. Until those attacks go out and almost make the difference a full 10 points. Yeah. Drawing an Argent Command there here, go. but there goes the Kona Cold to hold them in place, so now I can play. It's actually going to wipe two of them out, as well as holding that Dark Iron Dwarf in place. And allow yeah, him to go back that, on the offensive. Cool. He finally draws the Blood Imp, but at this point, most of his aggro is already gone. He needs to continue to clear the board the best he can and try to hold on, because it's getting to late game here. It is, uh... I kind of like the position that the mage is in at this point. Uh, I mean, it can easily swing. There are a few cards that, that give the Warlock that reach. Um, Holds off on dropping that Arcane Commander. He, he wants this. to ping with the hero power, and that's going to allow him to still drop the Water Elemental, come up with the Caustic Slime, and uh, still sit there with his Water Elemental on the board. Yeah, it's another smart play. Um, ooh, this Knife Juggler is going to do some damage here. Uh, you kind of want to save your Argent Commanders for almost pseudo-removal. It's basically, you get to put them out there, do four free damage to a minion, and then have a 4-3 minion on the board. Uh, this is probably where you're going to see that Argent Commander come out and, and take out that Knife Juggler. Just keeps going for the face here, and... Uh... <laughs> you see the smack talk out. continue! Drawing a flame imp. Uh, you right know there, what? You might actually see a power. Might see a board wipe at this point. 
We have a flame strike waiting in the wings, and at this point, he has not. He has a pretty good card advantage. He is going to drop the Ardent Commander, however, which is going to bring him too low to use that flame strike. But he is going to follow up there and just try and clear the board as much as he can. Actually, it looks like he might skip over these. He's going to use his hero power there to just go straight to cooldown. That wouldn't take out any of the elves. Follow up and uh, sacrifice a little bit of health on that water elemental. Yep, this is where you start to see that power, that draw. Manages to get the demon I, I, started. Uh, I, I like, I, this is kind of, like I said, this is where you see the power of that draw, although it may be a little too little too late. He doesn't really want to throw that that, <laughs> that imp out there to, to take that damage to the face. Uh, kind of assuming that a board what is coming here. This flame strike obviously sitting there. Aldorian knows he's got it. He's got to be careful. He keeps throwing all his minions on, and we could see it for the advantage here. Uh, it looks like he actually is going to hold off. Seems, oh, obviously to get rid of the divine shield so that that uh, monster goes down as well. Now he puts down the mirror images to have some taunts up. And uh, it looks like he's got a fireball in waiting as well. So there's going to be some damage going out here on Eldorian. If he doesn't know Not how just to handle a fireball. on the board. There's a pyroblast. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think next turn you see Argent Commander fireball everyone to the face. He's got those two minions out there for protection. Uh, and I think that does it. That will do. Oh no, he'll just pyro blast. <laughs> he yeah, is down to do 10 health. For the... He is down to 10 health now, so that is, that's it. That's going to be a and good game. And follows up with another fireball. That would have <laughs> been absolutely devastating. He's got a double fireball just to rub it in that he could have easily taken him down. Nico coming out of the uh, the woodworks there, turning it around with his mage, getting those last final nuke abilities, um, really helping him secure the easy, you know, the end game. I think that we didn't see, you know, I, you guys were talking about this at the end of match one, saying that in order to handle this deck, he was going to really kind of need some early game control with, say, Cone of Cold um, or, you know, the Water Elemental Freeze, and, and we didn't see much of that. I thought I think we saw one Cone of Cold. Nico just did a really good job managing minions and keeping kind of the, the Warlock board cleared. Like I said, there were two times there I saw that Eldorian not only dumped his entire hand onto the board, but also then replenished it with his life tap and then dumped it all again and lost the card advantage once again. And once that happened, once that second clear came out with the flame strike, that's really when um, El or Nico's story... Uh, secured his victory and, and, and drawing the, the double fireballs on top of having the, the pyroblast in his hand. There was just so much nuke ready for the late game that, that Eldorian just had his back against the wall. The, yeah. He drew, he drew in too slow. Eldorian did, that is. Um, didn't draw Flame Imps, didn't draw Divine Shield, didn't draw Blood Imp off his starting hand. He only had a Void Walker, which is a good... Um, it's a good aggression stopper to kill the the more important minions, but there was nothing to protect in that, unfortunately. So we need to see, I think, just a better starting hand from him, just slightly, and I think we'll see a better game from him. Yeah, I think the other the other thing you can kind of look at is he wants to be a little more aggressive, and I think he should be just as aggressive as he was in that first game. If he has that flame strike in mind the entire game, that is turn seven. By turn seven, you should have this game just about won with that warlock. I, in my opinion, I don't care about the flame strike. If you wipe my board, I, you saw how quickly he can replenish this board. Just keep putting pressure on the mage, and I, I think if he does that, uh, he'll be okay. All right. Well, before we get into our fat lie, our final match this has been a wonderful tournament. We've seen two uh, great matches go into the third match. So here, the 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 revenge of the century. Match number three, one for one, Eldorian, Nico Story going for the title to get into the finals to, to go up against IBS and his Shaman deck coming up. But first, real quick before we get to our final match, a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back with Hearthstone tournament action, but first, I want to tell you guys about Shutterstock.com. Shutterstock is a must-have tool for anyone in the creative industry. With over 20 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. Injecting your website with some instant credibility is easy to do when using Shutterstock. 
Whether you need still photography, stock footage, or even art assets for a website or YouTube channel, Shutterstock.com is the place to be. If you guys don't believe us, I promise the creative industry uses Shutterstock all of the time. Just this last weekend, if you go and see Marvel's new comic book movie, Thor The Dark World, and stay until the end to catch the teaser, be sure to keep an eye out at the bottom of the credits. Right there at the bottom, you'll see that even Marvel ended up using Shutterstock. Shutterstock is a great tool used all over popular media, and is a great resource to have in any content creator's Swiss Army knife. You can try Shutterstock today without using a credit card by signing up for a free account, and you can save all of your favorite images to a lightbox to review them later. Once you're ready to purchase, if you use the offer code GAMEBREAKER1213, you'll receive 25% off your new account. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Game Breaker Hearthstone League. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, joining us as always, Jeremy, Kyle, here we go. We are on the third match of the second round, Eldorian, Nico Story, Warlock, Mage, one for one. We've seen both poten potential from both decks here, the speed of the Warlock deck, the extreme damage from the Mage deck. What are you guys expecting coming into match three here? Where where does the advantage lie? What are they going to do? You know, we've seen, obviously, the strengths of both decks. How are, how's Eldorian going to manage what Nico's story has to throw? And what's Nico's story going to do to kind of try and hold Eldorian at bay? I think this match is all about what Eldorian can get for a starting hand and, and, and if he can force that tempo. Uh, Nico, on the other hand, just, just I think he did everything right, in, I think, in both games. He, he made good plays. Uh, it, it, this this matchup I think just comes down to if if Eldorian can it can force this game and can play as fast as his Warlock deck uh, potentially can play. Uh, if that happens, there's, it's going to be very difficult for Nico. He's going to have to play an outstanding game to to kind of come out on top in that situation. Yeah, Nico just needs some kind of uh, tempo stopper. Basically, he needs to re uh, regain board control somewhere around turn four or five. And at that point, uh, Eldorian's lost all tempo. He can go on just to win the game from there. Now you guys yep. said... Roller coasters. Uh, <laughs> you guys said just before the, the first match began that both Eldorian and Nico's story in the Swiss, ra Swiss round qualifiers from last week lost to a Shaman. Now, um, who do you guys think IVS, who's sitting in our top spot for the finals, who's IVS rooting for? Where's his advantage going to be? Who does he want to see move on to the finals? <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I take back what I said at the end of the last round. I think he wants Nico story in the finals, and the reason why is he's the one that beat Nico <laughs> in Ooh. two games in round three of the Swiss. So maybe, maybe that's what he's looking for. Maybe he, that's his sweet spot. If that didn't happen, I would still say he wants the uh, the Warlock because, as we saw in the previous game uh, with IVS, he likes to use rock fighters or weapons to to regain board control, but take life away from himself as a resource. You don't want to do that against a mage with two fireballs and a pyroblast. It just doesn't work well, and so I still think he will want Eldorian. So we'll have to see. We will have to see. Sure it's going to be a good final. Before we get to that final match, we have got to get through our third match of the second qualifier rounds in the semifinals. So let's just jump right into it. Eldorian versus Nico Story. Round three, fight! Oh as we, we, uh, as we get into this, what? I still don't know why. I, I'm still questioning why Eldorian didn't use the overpowered deck. Still baffles me to this know. day. When you name a deck the overpowered, that would be the at. one deck I would use. <laughs> He's got that game breaking deck though. I'm telling you, that's why. What is more powerful? Game breaking or overpowered? Straight up. Just, just straight up overpowered? I don't know. <laughs> just have to wait and see. <laughs> flame Imp, oh. two flame imps and a dark iron dwarf there for Eldorian, and he goes first. Gonna just drop that dark iron dwarf and draw another <laughs> dark iron dwarf! <laughs> <laughs> Looking over here at Nico's story, he's got Arcane Missile's mirror image, and uh, he's going to drop that slime, and I didn't see what the other one was, but he's going to draw an Azure Drake and an Apprentice Sorcerer, and as well as get that coin for going second. Eldorian's got a good starting hand here, with both Flame Imps. Uh, would have been better if he yeah. had the coin, 
but he doesn't, so he's gonna have to live with it. Interesting. The Sorcerer's Apprentice, okay. and then also go following up with those arcane missiles. Nice play there. Yeah, 50% chance to kill the uh, the flame imp. So he, the odds were pretty even, and he got it. So good play there. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that card. It's no Yolo bomber, uh, but it's it's pretty good. <laughs> Helps deal with blood imps, though. That's that's what I really like it for. This is an interesting play because it looks like it's just going to get traded with at this point. Um. Actually, it looks like he's going to just skip over the Fire Imp and uh, drop down some taunts there to keep his Sorcerer on the board. I can see the value in that. Uh, I, I question a little bit just if... Well, knowing what we know, it's probably the correct play. Uh, though, if he had some sort of removal, it might have been an interesting move. I, I still think it would have been better if he cleared it, because as we said, all he needs to do is make him the late game. The Warlock's going to kill himself in Pyroblast range, pretty much. Yep. Let's see if we see a... Gonna hold on to that other Sorcerer's Apprentice to get oh the additional lower cost of your uh, spell power, but he might drop that Geomancer there. This no, is, maybe not. He's this actually going to drop the, the Taunt down again. So it costs nothing he's to get he's things. trying to out-aggro the Warlock. <laughs> He's like, look, I know, I know you have a lot of minions, but you're going to have to go through all of my taunts in order to get to me, and I'm going to force <laughs> you into the late game if I have to. This is, this is, this would be, I mean, it, I'd be very impressed if he is able to, if he is able to out-aggro this warlock. He might have done uh, enough that's... damage already. There's, there's the Pyroblast, the pyroblast. But, but he needs still six the turns. He is six turns from that. Uh, I'm sorry, not six. Uh, he's quite a few turns away at this point. He does have that Sorcerer's Apprentice, though, to make that cost a little bit less. But he's going to lay that down and almost pretty, pretty much sacrifice it to just get the early damage out there from the looks of it. He's got that Warlock low, and we know that the Warlock is going to draw. So maybe he thinks he's done enough damage early, and he's going to get to turn eight and and be okay. But it is definitely right. risky. Yeah, he can't he can't use his life tap at this point. He gets any lower, he's gonna get fireballed on one of these next uh, two turns and then pyroblasted on turn eight, and that's just a game. So he needs to contain it right now. Yep. Clearing those uh, turns, not in this deck. Apprentice. Not in this deck, in other decks I mage can actually do sixteen damage in one turn. Uh, with clever use of Ice Lance and Frostbolt and Fireball, I believe. That is a 16 damage play. So he, he knows, he has to know that he's he's getting, he is in danger at this point. Here is the problem though, is that Eldorian is up against the, the ropes here with only two cards in his hand, and Nico just drew his Flame Strike. He's going to be able to clear the board for the most part. He might wait an additional turn to ping off that Divine Shield, but... Eldorian's about to lose his entire, you know, field, and he's going to need that to take the advantage on life here. I think I would have liked to see the Dark Iron Dwarf there. Because he... Oh, but he does have... Okay, he gets the taunt from the, uh, the Defender of Argus instead, so he does manage to stop the aggression, but it is almost turn 7. Which means that's going to lead into trouble. I expect a ping on the Divine Shield to prepare for next turn. Or the silence that he just drew. Just needs at this point they're both looking to just kind of survive and and <laughs> oh this is tough. This is actually very close. This is a very uh, so far it's been a very well played game. I am uh, very impressed. The kind of games that drive me nuts. About it. I, I just <laughs> maybe you feel like there's like... no right choice. Do I, do I silence or do I ping it? Or do I, you know what? I'm going to draw two cards. I'm going to get that fireball in hand to be prepared. And now I got enough. Hopefully, if he's smart here, he's going to use his hero power to ping off that divine shield. Now he's got the flame strike. Now he's got the fireball. Now he's got the pyroblast. And we won't be able to combo them all in one turn, but he has set himself up nicely for the next two turns. Yeah, let's, let's see how, uh, 
Let's see how much... Oddly enough, at this point, if, if uh, Eldorian takes my advice and just doesn't care about this flame strike, uh, <laughs> it might be the wrong play because it is in his hand. And He's just going to keep going for the, the face. By putting down that Dark Iron Dwarf, he doesn't get to attack out of the gate, and he, you know, is essentially going to lose it here next turn for no reason whatsoever as the Flame Strike is going to come out here. Hey, he's putting him within range. Uh, he does Nico. have a... He has two charge minions. Doom Guard. Mm -hmm. So, Doom Guard... And some damage Ooh, taking a gamble okay, there with but... the life tap, going down to 11 health, throwing down that Elven Archer to try and get a lit. I think he's going to try and throw everything he can in these last few turns as quickly as he can onto Nico. He knows it's coming. He's put himself this into execute impressive. range. And that's a power blast to his face. But with that Azure Drake, that is actually, that is... actually, that is execute range with that Azure Drake. And there's the game. There's the game. Nico coming out on top. Nico holding it down. It looks like really, a. Looking... I'd say that. I'd say that came down to the very la like if 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 Nico would have let that go to the next round, Eldorian would have been able to turn around and finish Nico off. That that was the very end of the match. They both played that until their very last hand. Nico did a really good job holding on, defending off the amount of uh, speed, because we didn't really see a, a lot of minions coming out from Eldorian that time. It was a very slow start for him, and, and the early lead that uh, Nico got on his health just completely helped. That life tap at the end that put him within execute range, obviously was necessary to try and get as many minions as possible, but that then put him into execute range, which let him finish off the entire game. What yeah, I find interesting, to win it. but what I find interesting about this uh, the game here was that Nico only had one flame strike in his deck, and he drew it all three times by turn eight. He and believes that's in the heart of the good. cards. Yeah, uh, is isn't that that's what I said earlier? That's what he did. He believed in the heart of the cards. He got Eldorian to play a slower starting hand, and then got his flame strike when he needed it, and he's in the finals. That's and it a decent matchup, I think against the Shaman deck, so he did well. Now, what do you guys think here? Going into the finals, obviously, we've, we've seen what IBS has got to do. We talked a little bit about this before, just recapping before we get into it. We now know it's going to be IBS on his Shaman against Nico Story on his Mage. We've seen now what both, uh, what both players are capable of. Where do we think this match is going to go once we get into the finals? Yeah, I'm taking the Shaman again. I think it's just very consistent. Uh, I think the Mage has potential to win late game. They've already played each other, and the Shaman did really, it seems the Shaman did very well in the Swiss. Uh, they're both, from what I've seen, they both play, they both play very well. They both, uh, they're not making silly trades. They're not, I haven't seen uh, what I would call a, a serious mistake yet. Um, I, I still am going with the Shaman. I just think his deck is very, uh, very balanced. Allows him to punch through what damage he needs at the end, and it's it's quick enough that it, it, I think it can it can give this mage deck some problems. I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ch cheer for the mage who previously lost 2-0 to uh, to the Shaman here. So I'm gonna go with the mage, hoping that uh, we can see some aggro from him like we did that game. He almost out aggroed the aggroer, so. Maybe he can do that again and just surprise us, but I think we're in for a wild ride. Here's what I gotta yeah. say, just based off what we saw from IBS going really aggressive early on against Blues. Um, you know, he adjusted into match two, and that's also ultimately what helped him win match three. But if IBS picks up the strategy and decides to go offensive with his rock fighter weapon and all of the other things that he's doing, where he's putting Thrall a little bit more in danger, he's not gonna be able to do that with Nico. We we saw the amount of damage Nico can bring once he gets his fireballs and once he gets his pyroblast. You give him that flame strike and he's almost unstoppable at this point. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how aggressive IBS decides to go considering how strong Nico can be after just seven turns. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I think that flame strike is no longer a secret. Uh, we've all seen it now. So he knows that it's there and he, he can effectively hope he can play around it. So 
we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, it's that roller coaster. This is a five five game roller coaster coming up. I like it. All right, guys. Well, we have the finals for the Game Breaker League. A best of five match between IBS on his Shaman and Nico Story on his Mage. Be sure to stay tuned because it'll be coming up. If you guys are watching these videos on demand, that video will also be coming up shortly. So here we go. We'll be right back.